Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really cute corn husk applique pattern and I'll show you how to put it onto a pot holder. So let's get started. You'll need the following supplies. You'll need a piece of yellow fabric for the center of the corn and that's 4 inch by 8 inch. A piece of green for the leaf around the corn, eight and a half inch square. Background fabric, eight and a half inch square. For the back of the pot holder, you'll need an eight and a half inch square. Cotton batting, you can use either two eight and a half inch squares of cotton batting or one cotton batting and one insole bright, which is a synthetic fabric that helps to block the heat. Binding, you'll just need one strip, two and three quarter inches wide by 42. And I'm using a product called Pellon Light Easy Steam 2 Fusible Web, and you just need one sheet. Here's what the package looks like for the Pellon Light Easy Steam 2. On your sheets of fusible web, you're going to notice one side that's got the blue lines all over it. These are one inch grids in here. It's one through eight, so it's eight inches this way and seven inches this way. So on this side, you're going down three inches here, two inches here. Then you go down one and a half inch going towards this corner here and then you're just going a half inch right here. Here at the top you're going from the middle of the number seven here. You're going from the middle down and down. Then you're going over an inch across at an angle down three inches over two okay to where you end up down here at the end of the seven inch line you repeat this pattern over here on this side now here's how you draw the middle section it's just two inches wide and it's six excuse me five and a half inches long so you're uh, drawing uh, a four inch line here, a three inch line here. Just go at diagonals here. And then you're just going halfway through the center here. And then from this corner, meet right there. After you finish drawing your pattern, then cut it out of your sheet. Leave at least a quarter of an inch outside of the drawn lines. This is the front side of my fabric. You want to put your fusible web on the back side of your fabric. So here's the middle of the corn husk. On the back, you're going to take a straight pin to tear the paper. So you just do that, then bend it till a corner pops up, and then pull it off. Now you don't want to remove the glue. This is very sticky. And then put it again on the back side. Finger press it down. And then go ahead and cut on your drawn lines. Now I've already done the outer portion of the corn, so this is what it looks like. And the fusible web is on the back. Before you place your uh, pieces on your background fabric, you need to be aware of how to center it. Remember that your binding is going to cover the edges, so don't get it too close. So you want to get it centered so that you have enough space here and over around here for the binding to be placed. Remove the paper on the back again by tearing the paper, bending it, waiting for a piece to pop up. Just gently set it where you 
think you want it to go. Don't finger press or permanently adhere anything just yet because you want to make sure it's centered and it's not going to be too close to the edges. Take your other piece and place it in here. Just place it in there. And again, don't finger press anything just yet. Make sure you got it lined up. Now, if your edges are just slightly jagged, don't worry about it because your decorative stitching that you're gonna do around the edge will cover all of that up. Once you're happy with the way everything is placed, then go ahead and finger press it down. Before you start permanently fusing it on, read the instructions on the package, especially if you're using a different brand. The instructions might be slightly different when it comes to pressing. So on the Pellon one, it asks for you to place a damp cloth. I just uh, spray a cloth that I have by my uh, ironing board at all times, so it's always there. And then use a hot iron with steam and just hold it in place for whatever the number of seconds says on your package. Then after you've held it in one spot for that amount of time and move it over to the next spot, you just wanna make sure you cover all of it. Then when you're done, I like to let mine cool down for a few minutes before I do any stitching on it. I'm going to use an applique stitch on my machine, which is a satin stitch. Before you begin stitching around your applique pattern, test the stitch out. Because when I first began to stitch, it was very loose and very open and you can see right in between each of the stitches. So uh, play around with your tension to make sure you're getting the look that you want. I recommend if you have an applique open toe presser foot, this way you can see exactly where you are stitching. I'm going to be using polyester thread because it gives a really nice shine to your applique design. I recommend that you use tearaway stabilizer on the back of the uh, background fabric when you're doing your quilting stitches, or excuse me, your applique stitches along the edges. You can use thin paper like this, which comes in rolls. You can buy it at Home Depot. In the paint department, you put it behind your pattern. As I was editing this video and putting it together, I realized I had left out a step. So as you're looking at the screen, you're seeing the finished pot holder. The step I left out is the stitching order for your decorative stitching. But I will show you in the rest of this video how to finish this pot holder. So here's the stitching order. Stitch the upper portion of the corn from here. So start at one side, either side, and stitch and stop down here. Then you're going to start over here. And this makes it look like the corn is, you know, is the corn has being wrapped around by the, the uh, leaves, corn has leaves. So you're going to start down here, stitch across up, and all the way around, down, around, and stop down here. Once you've completed that, then turn it over on the back and tear the paper off. Next step is to layer the fabric. So here's the fabric for the back. You're gonna have the pretty side facing down. Put your cotton batting and or Insulbrite in there and then your corn applique piece on top. Place pins around to hold. Then after you've done that, a couple of other stitching uh, suggestions that I have is to stitch on the outside of the corn. But you're going to stitch right next to your satin stitch here. And just use a, a matching thread to your background because you're stitching on the background fabric, you're not going to stitch on your satin stitch. Again, just stitch all the way around the outer edge, all the way around. Then one more suggestion I have is to stitch on the inside here. 
this makes it pop out a little bit more of a slightly three-dimensional look. Then I have one more stitching pattern that I recommend. I call it my echo stitch. I'm sure there's a better name for it, but this is what I call it. Is you're going out about a half an inch. You can even do less if you like. And echo this design. And so go all the way around and it makes this pop out even more. If you do not know how to cut out a binding strip, leave your fabric folded with the selvage edges together and then straighten out that raw edge by putting your ruler straight across that raw edge and cut it straight and then move over two and three quarter inches and do your second cut and that's how you're going to get this long strip of fabric. Also cut the selvage ends off. That's usually that white fabric. Go ahead and take your strip, fold it in half, and press it the full length. You're going to place it on the pot holder on this edge up here. So let me move it over there. That's better. So take it, pin it up in this corner, and stitch 3 eighths of an inch along here. When you get down to this corner, 3 eighths of an inch away, let me move this up, stop 3 eighths of an inch away from this corner and take it out of your machine. Pull the binding strip out this way so that this edge is even with each other. Place your finger or your thumb, whatever you got to hold it in place, pull it back this way to where you have a fold that looks like that. I would place a pin there to hold it and then put it under your presser foot and starting from this folded edge down here, stitch 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Do your next two corners the same way. As you approach your last corner, that's this one here where you started, you're going to pull this binding past your stitch line here. Make sure you pull it past and place a pin there to hold. And then go ahead and finish stitching your binding on and you're going to go up over this edge and stop right there. You're going to measure out from this edge right here and count out four and a half inches, one, two, three, four and a half, and trim this off. Cut a square out just through one layer there. So you're going to go over about an inch, inch and a quarter, and stop about a quarter of an inch from the fold line. Then you're going to do this next step at your ironing board. You're going to fold this edge down here over a quarter of an inch and press it with your iron. Then you're going to fold this edge up and press it with your iron. Then fold it in half and press with your iron. Another thing I like to do at the ironing board is press these edges here. It's going to make it much easier to fold your binding over. So go along with your iron and press those edges. Then turn it over on the back and pull all your corners up. You want it straight up. Then you're going to begin pinning these edges. So you're going to pull this folded edge past the stitch line. It's very important. It goes past that stitch line and place pins like this to hold it. So you're going to go around all four sides and I'm going to show you how to fold those corners. So when you come to a corner, put a pin on one side of the corner and then, whoops, get this in here. Then go to the other side of the corner and place a pin. 
So now you've got this bump here. So let me show you how to take care of that little bump. Go ahead and take a straight pin, press down, in, fold it over, and pin it. So you have this mitered corner fold. So fold all of your corners like that. When you're done, it's going to look like this. So this corner over here is just got one pin there. You're going to leave this sticking out. You're going to start stitching in this corner here. So go ahead and place it under there. Now I've got my walking foot on because it makes it easier to go through this. So lower your needle exactly where you're going to start and you're going to stitch in the ditch. That's where the two pieces of fabric come together and you're going to stitch right next to the binding but not on the binding. So go ahead and begin stitching. And I would advise you to re remove your pins as you go because you can break a needle, which I have done many times, even without a pin being in the way. When you get down to this next corner, All right, so you're going to leave your needle down right in that corner. Now my presser foot automatically comes up when I stop stitching. If yours doesn't do that, leave your needle down, lift, lift up the presser foot, turn the pot holder, and begin stitching down. Do that on the next three sides. I'm approaching the corner where the loop begins. So this is how you're going to do it. Stitch along the edge of the binding, then when you get right into the corner, kind of move your, your uh, pot holder just slightly and begin stitching on the top edge here. And you're going to keep the two pieces or the two sides folded together and stitch right along this edge. all the way down to the corner. And when you get to that corner, leave your needle down, turn it, and finish stitching across the end. And then tie it off. Take the end of your loop and just bring it around like this. Whoops. And push it right underneath the corner there. and then flip it over. So here's what it should look like. And I would stick a pin to hold it for this next step. And then you're going to put it in your machine and you're going to stitch a little square right up in here. Go back, turn it, get my pin pad out of the way, turn it and then stitch, turn it again, stitch, turn it, and then I turn it one more time to go across that bottom edge, and then tie it off. For more potholder projects, go to the green screen at the end of this video and click on the links. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on that old thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address, click on that bell so you receive the email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny and see you next time. Happy sewing!